Hello, I'm Federico Barrera of the Madison Historical Society. Our high school is named for Daniel Hand, a local boy who, having earned a fortune, used it to promote the public education he so fervently believed. A northerner whose business was in the South, Hand was caught up in the moral and political conflicts of the Civil War. At one point, he was mobbed and even imprisoned under suspicion of being a northern spy. At the end of his career, Daniel Hand generously provided funds for the construction of Madison's Hand Academy. But with the bulk of his money, he established a trust fund with the American Missionary Society for the purpose of educating black Americans. You might ask, where did this man's story begin? Well, he was born in 1801 in a house that still exists on Madison's Horse Pond Road. When he was 11 years old, Daniel's mother, Artemisa Meigs, died, and a few years later, Daniel joined his brother Augustus in Augusta, Georgia. There, they worked with their uncle Daniel Meigs in a wholesale grocery business. By the time he was 22, Daniel had become the store's sole proprietor, and by 1829, when he married, Daniel was well on his way to establishing himself both financially and socially. Sadly, the family's happiness was short-lived. A son died in infancy, and Daniel's wife succumbed to yellow fever in an epidemic that ravaged the entire South in 1839. Hoping to protect his surviving daughter Elizabeth, Han sent her north to live with her maternal grandparents. But at the age of 11, she contracted scarlet fever, and in December 1841, died. Grief-stricken, Han carried with him for the rest of his life a lock of her hair and the letter she had written to him. During these difficult years, Daniel greatly expanded his grocery, dry goods, and guano businesses. In 1838, he took on George Williams, a promising young man only 17 years old. Williams convinced Han to stop the sale of alcohol. This unusual decision was inspired by a growing temperance movement and proved to be very profitable. Han, Williams, and company became one of the South's most successful businesses. But in time, Daniel's anti-slavery position chafed against the beliefs of Williams and against the growing secessionist sentiment in the South. The Hand-Williams partnership was in jeopardy. In 1852, George W. Williams and Company was established in Charleston. Daniel Hand returned north to New York to establish his own business, but he did, however, remain an agent for Williams. In December 1860, South Carolina seceded from the Union and the opening shots of the Civil War were fired in Charleston in April 1861. In order to protect their business interests from the Confederacy, Williams asked Hand to return south. Although Hand was then 60 years old and wanting to retire, he made this difficult wartime journey across Confederate lines. There, he was promptly arrested and accused of being a Northern spy. Eventually released through the efforts of Williams, Handel was ordered to report to Confederate headquarters in Richmond, Virginia. Stopping along the way to make a visit to his old hometown, Augusta, he was mobbed by an angry crowd and, for his own protection, he was jailed overnight. Eventually, Hand made his way to Richmond, only to be arrested once again on charges of spying. He spent a month in the harsh and crowded Libby prison, later nicknamed Rat Hell, and, once again, Williams successfully argued for his release. Hand was then ordered to, quote, conduct himself peaceably at a place of his choice within the Confederacy. Not wishing to return further south, he found safe harbor in Asheville, North Carolina. Finally, at the end of the war, in 1865, he was able to return to Guilford, Connecticut, where his brother Jahil lived. Although Hand continued to trust Williams with his business interests in the Williams Company, he never returned south. It wasn't until 1881, when George Williams visited Daniel in Guilford, that Hand realized the full extent of his fortune. His share was $2 million, or approximately the modern equivalent of $42 million. In 1872, Hand, a deeply religious man, had donated funds for the education of Southern blacks to the American Missionary Society. Now, he was able to establish a larger fund. His gift of $1 million was the largest philanthropic gift ever made by a living donor in the history of the nation. He ordered that the income of the fund, quote, shall be used for the purpose of educating needy and indigent people of African descent, residing, or who may hereafter reside, in the recent slave states of the United States.
sometimes called the Southern States. Unquote. Upon his death in 1891, the remainder of his fortune, amounting to half a million dollars, was added to his original gift. The American Missionary Society used the income from the Daniel Hand Fund for education in more than 140 educational institutions. Today, the fund is used for scholarships administered by the United Church of Christ. Thousands of students have benefited from Daniel Hand's immense generosity. And, in addition to Madison's hand, at least five schools in the South bore his name. As author Philip Platt noted, quote, Daniel Hand's life nearly spanned the entire 19th century. At a time when others were losing interest in the black man's plight, Daniel Hand reached out to help those in desperate need. For his inspired philanthropy, Daniel Hand is properly regarded as one of Madison's most distinguished sons." Unquote. 